All right, good evening, everybody. It's a few minutes past 6.30, so we'll get started here. My name is David Glenn with the National Weather Service here in Newport, Moorhead City. Um, all right, this is our briefing as of 6 p.m. We've got quite a bit to go over here, so let's get started on the slides. Uh, this is our situation overview. Uh, you can see each one of the hazards there. Uh, our verbiage has changed from possible to likely and now to expected. So life-threatening storm surge inundation is expected. Uh, we'll talk about the locations. Uh, here across East North Carolina shortly. Prolonged periods of heavy rain are expected which could lead to flash flooding and water covered roads. Life threatening winds and wind damage are expected resulting in downed trees, power and communication outages. We'll show you where the likelihood of the highest threat of that uh, here shortly as well. And then the potential for increased tornadic activity. So we'll show you some examples of that. Uh, very dangerous to extreme marine conditions are also likely. And uh, you can see the timing of these threats are, are mainly Thursday through Friday. We'll get into here what we have. This is where, where uh, Dorian is at right now. It's uh, moving uh, a little bit now. Movement north-northwest at 8 miles an hour. You can see they're off the coast of northeast Florida, Georgia, heading towards the coastal sections of South Carolina and, and then us here in eastern North Carolina. Uh, confidence is high that we will see life-threatening storm surge, heavy rain, and strong winds across our area. Uh, key takeaways, we talked about this earlier today, you need to rush to completion your hurricane preparations. We said try to have them done by today. You have a little bit of a tiny sliver of a window. You need to try to be done by sunrise tomorrow morning before we start seeing some of these impacts across southwestern portions of eastern North Carolina and then it'll exp expand northward throughout the day. As this, as this event unfolds, remember don't cross flooded flood waters uh, across roadways. Listen to local evacuation orders if they are given as well. So where are threat levels? We'll steer, we are still feeling that the threat is high for surge, rainfall, and flooding, and winds, and low for tornadoes. And we may up that tornado threat to moderate closer to the coast tomorrow, tomorrow uh, just depending on how close the center of the storm is. But the reality is with any of these rain bands that come on shore, we have the threat for tornadoes. So something to keep in mind. We're still pretty confident on the fact that we're going to have life-threatening storm surge, flash flooding, and strong winds across our area. Storm surge threat. Uh, it's highest across uh, our southern portions from North Topsail over to Cape Lookout. That's where we have five to uh, four to seven feet above ground. And actually, I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to go over the values because I got another graphic for that. But you can see here where we have the highest storm surge threat, severe beach erosion with significant dune loss and possible overwash, large sections of nearshore escape routes and secondary roads washed out or severely flooded. And this higher threat may expand a little north with time, but I think what we have right now is, is pretty solid as far as the uh, expected impacts in our area. As you can see most of eastern North Carolina, coastal portions, sound side and ocean side are under a storm surge warning. That means life-threatening storm surge in the warning area. Life-threatening storm surge, that's three feet or higher. That's enough to do a lot of damage, uh, um, could, could wash away vehicles, can, uh, can do quite a bit of damage along the coastline there. So remember that. One, things we, one of the things we want to remember to talk about is on top of the surge, you can have waves and that depends on where you're located. If you're in an open exposure and the wind can get to you from a long distance, that's going to add to the water levels a little bit there by adding some waves one to two to three feet even more in some places depending on your location. So remember wave action can come on top of storm surge and we're expecting this to have major damage to marinas, docks, and piers. Oh, I went back. So let's go forward. So here's the potential storm surge flooding map. On the bottom left there, and as you saw it in the briefing, this is a clickable link in, uh, within the PDF document. So you can click on it and take you to the latest from the National Hurricane Center. So what are we expecting as far as values? So south of Cape Lookout, down into Wilmington's area, it's four to seven feet above ground. Once you get above Cape Lookout, uh, on the ocean side, three to six feet above ground. Uh, so some of the reasons for that difference is the way Cape Lookout sticks out, similar to the way Cape Hatter sticks out, but the way Cape Lookout sticks out uh, in the trajectory of this storm, it's going to allow for a little bit higher water levels there from the southern portions of our uh, coastal areas. So north of that, three to six feet ocean side, and as well three to six feet on the sounds and rivers. So for folks down in uh, down East Carteret County, Southern Craven County, Noose, Pamlico, Pongo, those areas, Alligator River, uh, this is something to keep in mind. Three to six feet is a significant amount of water. As far as timing, we're looking at storm surge could begin as early as Thursday morning. That's mainly for the southern coastal areas, uh, extending up to Cape Lookout, then expanding north and into the sounds throughout the day 
uh, into Thursday afternoon and then persisting Thursday night and through Friday morning until Dorian makes its eventual track either just off the coast or through eastern North Carolina. The transition to flooding rain threat now, you can see we're high for most of eastern North Carolina. That has expanded a little bit inland and I'll show you why in a minute based on uh, a slight increase in some of the rainfall amounts. Um, so something to keep in mind here, floodwaters can enter multiple structures within the community. Um, and, and one of the things we really want to hammer home with folks is don't drive through water covered roads. Remember one of the themes of the National Weather Service, turn around, don't drown. Here's our expected storm total rainfall for our area. Uh, that six to eight inches still seems pretty solid across the interior portions, but it's increased a little bit. That eight to ten inch threshold has expanded just a little bit farther inland. So something to keep in mind. These are what we have right now based on the latest track, the latest best guidance. Uh, but we do want to highlight that locally higher amounts up to 15 inches is still possible. Um, and a little bit there about the river flooding threat. We're thinking in our area minor to moderate. Um, but if these higher rainfall amounts start extending a little bit farther inland, a little bit farther inland, that could lead to a, a little bit higher threat on the river flooding side. But for right now, we're thinking minor to moderate river flooding levels. With the wind threat, uh, it stays fairly similar. You might see this alter just a little bit over the next day or so, um, but that's, that's mainly based on just little tweaks in the track and where the track may go. But as you can see, there, where it's in red, that's where you have the highest likelihood of having hurricane force gust, where you're in the orange and a uh, little sliver of yellow there in northwestern Martin County. That's related more to a, a little bit diminished impact, uh, uh, excuse me, a little bit diminished wind threat. As you get farther inland, you get farther away from the center. Those areas is where we would expect sustained tropical storm force winds, maybe some gusts uh, uh, in the higher range of the tropical storm force. Most likely time of arrival, uh, it's going to be tomorrow uh, uh, afternoon through tomorrow night, although we mentioned you could, we could start seeing tropical storm force winds as early as Thursday morning. That's for the Duplin County, Onzo County, uh, and the Carteret County. Um, we want to give you a little window here of how long are these winds going to last. So tropical storm force winds are expected for a period of at least 12 to 18 hours for most of eastern North Carolina and as much as 24 hours down here closer to the coast and for the Outer Banks. So something to keep in mind. We also provided you a couple links in there. If you want to look at your specific location, say you're wondering about Beaufort or you're looking at Bellhaven or Manio, you can click on the hourly weather graph link there and put in your location and get uh, uh, what's expected over the next several days as far as winds, temperature, precipitation, all in an hourly graphic form. Uh, it's very useful, so something to keep in mind if you're interested in that. A couple graphics here, ma maximum, excuse me, maximum sustained winds for Hurricane uh, Dorian. You can see it's highest there along the coast. That matches up where we have our high threat, uh, high wind threat there. And then it diminishes as you get farther inland, farther away from the storm. Uh, but we're expecting large trees snapped, uprooted, uh, fences blown over, roof damage to homes, uh, and, and even mobile homes, and some roads may be impassable from large debris. Here's our maximum wind gust uh, for the duration of, of Dorian. Uh, bridges could, could become impassable or inex inaccessible. Large areas of power and communication outages are also expected. So you can see inland, uh, New Bern, Bellhaven, all the way up into Plymouth, even though you may not have the stronger sustained wind, you can still have some gusts closer to hurricane force there uh, during the duration of Dorian. Tornado threat, uh, compared to yesterday, this has expanded inland quite a bit, and I think that has to do with the track being a little bit closer to shore over the last couple of uh, um, issuances, so something to keep in mind. Uh, we want to make sure that you have multiple ways to receive warnings. Um, this seems like a late Thursday night, early Friday morning event. That's usually when people are sleeping. Most of the fatalities in tornadoes occur in nighttime across North Carolina. So something to keep in mind, make sure you have a, a radio that is charged. Um, either it, it uses its own battery pack or you, you have batteries port. Make sure your, your cell phones are charged because if we issue a tornado warning, that will alert your wireless emergency alerts and give you a, a heads up on your phone. So make sure you have multiple ways of receiving warnings if we do have to issue tornado warnings. And here's our final slide. Uh, it, we, we're still pretty confident this event is going to occur, and we've given you some examples there of what we're expecting as far as exact impacts. Life-threatening storm surge, life-threatening rainfall, which could lead to flash flooding, water-covered roads, life-threatening winds and wind damage, uh, leading to downed trees, power communication outages. We've also uh, mentioned how it's rough it's going to be along the ocean um, and the potential for tornadoes. So um, with that, I'll, I'll stop here, and uh, Larry Brown from 
Wakefield is going to be on to speak with the Northeastern North Carolina communities. So, uh, Larry, just let me know when you want to change slides. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, because I, I can't actually see your slides, but I have the briefing in front of me, so I can just... Um, okay. Um, all right. Um, just what's, what's changed in our area, just that all of our um, North Carolina zones are now either in a hurricane warning for, for most of our areas towards the coast, for the tropical storm warning, well, in, in, in for places like Gates, uh, Hertford, Northampton, and Bertie. Um, all zones are now in a flash flood watch, and we can go to the next slide just with a threat level, uh, just to show that our, our confidence is higher. We have we looked at major for surge potential, high wind uh, potential, high rainfall flooding threats, and relatively low in our area for a tornado. Uh, but if the track were to go slightly more inland, that could be raised as David mentioned earlier. Um, you can go to the next slide now with the, uh, the peak potential winds. Uh, these are wind gusts we show, and you can see these have been increased since the briefing this morning and from yesterday, where we have um, hurricane force gusts across from about Edenton to just, you know, just south of Elizabeth City, Elizabeth City over to Corolla. Um, the highest, obviously, near the coast. As you get to the north and west, and when we still have significant wind gusts expected of uh, as high as 60 to 70 miles per hour, you get to well, Kansas County it starts to tail off to about 50, but still a pretty pretty significant wind gust, even well in. Um, and you can go to the next slide now. For the storm for total rainfall, you can see we have highest the gradient along the coast there in the southeast. A pretty good swap of six to eight from Windsor to Eaton, Orange City, and Corolla. Little area down in southern Currituck there, we have eight to ten uh, going up against the sound there, and it tails off. Not quite as quick as what we showed yesterday, but still um, three to four in Northampton, three to five in Northampton County. Um, timing of the greatest potentials from later Thursday afternoon, really through the day Friday. And based on these new rainfall forecasts, the Cashi River is likely to reach minor flood. If we go a little higher in these rainfall amounts, we could we could reach moderate flood uh, if we get in excess of eight inches of rain in the basin. I can go to the next slide. And you can see just some of this inundation. Um, looks not too much different than yesterday. It's show, showing some of the higher inundation levels potentially up up the rivers and on the sound. We do have a, a storm surge warning in effect for the entire uh, entire region. Potential for moderate to major flooding in some areas. And you can go to the next slide, which shows um, a graphic of duck. Uh, looking at that, that tide, the Friday, Afternoon tide right now is the one that looks to reach major flooding flooding levels. Um, potentially, we, we may need to ri raise that one that's before that a little bit, depending on how quick the winds can come in for Friday morning. And then we may, depending on how quick the storm pulls out, um, that one Saturday morning will be, you know, could potentially reach at least minor. But the, but the Friday afternoon one's looking like to be the highest tide. And you can just move the slide down. Confidence is high that the event will occur. Confidence is moderate to high regarding the impact and severity. Um, just take takeaway points. You know, we're expecting locally heavy rainfall and flooding. Rainfall six to eight inches in the east, four to six farther west, maybe up eight to ten in the extreme southeast. Flooding of the Cache Island River is likely. Um, damaging tropical storm force winds are expected with hurricane force gusts at the coast from, from Edenton, Elizabeth City, and over towards the coast. The most likely time of arrival is late Thursday night, and really the highest winds are expected during the day Friday. Okay. Likely along the coast, and in mainland like Currituck with severe coastal dune erosion, and orbital wash likely on Friday. Minor, moderate flooding is likely in Alamo, and the tornado potential is low based on the current storm track, but we need to watch that if it went slightly further inland, they could be raised a little bit. And the marine conditions will be dangerous later tomorrow through, it says in the Friday morning, through Friday um, due to rapidly building waves and or tropical storm force winds. Uh, we're expecting seas 12 to 20 feet along the coast, uh, along the, the coast from Corolla uh, Duck. And that's pretty much uh, what we have here for now.
Okay, thanks, Larry.